foot care. Should you use it? And four reasons why foster parents don't use respite. Hi, my name is Jen Avellaneta, and I'm going to share a little bit about uh, respite care. We have been licensed foster parents for over 16 years and have recently done a ton of respite this summer. We have four daughters that we've adopted through foster care and just thought it would be a really great fit for our family. And so today I just want to share a little bit more about respite with you. So before we get started, I just want to make sure that you have a chance to subscribe below. If foster care or adoption or respite care, any of these things interest you, I'm sharing here my experience, just some educational information from our experience as a foster family for 16 years. So follow along. So first, if you don't know what is respite care, I shared this in a previous video. I will try to link it below for you. But respite care is basically a short break or an interval from something that is hard. So in the case of foster care, it is really a reprieve, a time that you can access away from the foster child so that you can have a break or a chance to really regroup before having that foster child return to you your home. And who needs respite care? I think we all do, honestly. Anyone who is in the trenches of foster care could, from time to time, use a little bit of break to regroup and understand why we decided to do foster care in the first place. So first, what are four reasons why I personally believe why foster parents do not access respite care. And the first reason is because as foster parents, I tend to find that we by nature are extremely compassionate individuals. We love to give. We tend to give and keep on giving. And it can be, I think, kind of hard in our nature to really step back or to take a break. We want to jump in with all of our hearts and our hands and our minds and always help. And so I think as foster parents, part of our nature can make it hard, right? To say I am weak or struggling or I need a break or I need to take care of me. That can be really hard as a foster parent. And so number one, I think part of the difficulty is because we are compassionate people. So it's hard for us sometimes to ask for help. The second reason why I think that foster parents I um, tend to not ask for respite. And I'm speaking about this really from my own experience because I have found that more times than not, it has been extremely hard to ask for help. I fall in that compassionate group where I don't want to quit. I don't want to take a break. I don't want to take off, take care of me or, or um, really, I'm just all in on helping these kids. And so so when we do actually find respite, I think number two, the reason that we don't use it or access it is because really respite care is super hard to find. There are a lot of families that want to do long-term care. They are seeking to foster and adopt out of foster care. And they um, struggle with just saying, okay, I'm going to take a child for a weekend or maybe a week. Maybe they don't find it as fulfilling or rewarding, or it's harder for the child to adapt in their home. And so it is, at least in my state, I'm in Washington state, extremely hard to find respite care. The third reason I think that foster parents don't access respite care. And again, this is really, there's no scientific formula. This is just my experience as a foster parent is because this, right? We just don't want to let our kids go to respite. We love these kids. They come into our home and oftentimes we work so hard to provide this perfect balance for our kids. They adapt into our homes and maybe we've seen progress. They've learned to walk or learn to talk or um, they're making progress in therapy. And so maybe it is that we just don't um, want to see them regress. We don't want them to feel like another abandonment or another um, case where they have, they have to break attachment or they feel like they do. And so it can be, um, for me personally, really hard to ask for help, but also really hard just to watch these kids go and to really step back and, and really focus on myself when so much of my world is caught up in my kiddos. The fourth reason that I think that foster parents don't use respite in addition to 
being compassionate, not wanting to let the kids go, having troubles finding respite is because this, we worry about the attachment of our kids. We worry that they are going to feel abandoned, that they are going to start to have nightmares or that maybe the progress that they made, they will regress. We don't want that as foster parents. We want this momentum, this trust, this um, a building of progression and really working through their issues. We want it to continue. And so to put them in respite, I think for me, I can sometimes feel like I failed, even though that's not really the case, right? Taking care of ourselves or not, that's not failing. Taking care of our needs or having a break is not failing. It's necessary and it's really healthy, but it can be hard to do um, because we do get so attached. And so not only does it feel like the child's attachment may be broken from us, it can may, maybe feel like we are so into the, the lives of our children that we don't want to break attachment with them either. We love this idea of helping and nurturing and caring for our kiddos. So the second part of this video is should you use respite? And honestly, it can be hard to navigate respite. It can be hard to find it. It can be a lot of work to wash all the clothes and make sure they have, you know, matching socks and a brand new toothbrush and all the things they need. I tend to write letters to um, the person who's doing respite and letting them know their schedule or maybe triggers or maybe um, things to stay away from or what they love or they enjoy. Um, it can be a lot of work. It can be a lot of work preparing the child emotionally if they're old enough to understand why they're going to see a, a new home and how long they'll be there and maybe make a chart. We make charts to check off the days until we'll be back again. And there could be just a lot of prep work to preparing a child to do respite. So should you use respite? This is what I found about respite that respite can make all the difference. It can determine whether a child stays or a child leaves. And potentially, maybe you're having a hard child in your home and you're like, oh, I don't wanna use respite and I can tough this out. And maybe you do for another week or maybe two weeks, but eventually the pressure and the stress that um, increases the behaviors of your child and that um, makes it hard for you or your family or your marriage or the kids that are already in your home. And then what happens? That child gets uh, maybe sent to another foster home. And so when we don't use respite, it can make it so much harder long term because then as a foster parent, to um, have displaced a placement that's been in your home. Honestly, there could be a lot of guilt and a lot of shame and it can be extremely hard to overcome. You can feel like you failed the kids and um, the kids can feel like you have failed them. Um, and so to not use respite can actually long-term in the big picture be harder than the present discomforts or difficulty or the complications of setting up respite early on. It can make all the difference in whether a foster child ends up staying long-term or has to leave. Number two is that respite care, why you should do it is because it's honestly super refreshing. Have you ever taken a vacation and maybe gone somewhere and once you're there, maybe you're at the beach or at a campground, it's like everything becomes clear, right? All the daily distractions, the laundry and dishes and schedules are gone and you're able to see things clearly, maybe even for the first time in a long time. Respite for me has been a time that I honestly have resisted and not wanted to ever use but when I have used it, I come back a whole new person. I tend to have like 10 times more energy and 10 times more love for the kids. I miss them um, immensely. And so really distance does make the heart grow fonder. And you uh, really recognize that, wow, there's a really strong bond with this child. Or you can see maybe the progress that child has made once you've done respite and had that child be in respite for a couple of days. So there are so many benefits to using respite. Respite brings clarity, like I said, and it can also magnify really the good things about the child and what you're doing. 
Um, it can feel like maybe you felt like you were drowning before. Maybe you feel like that right now watching this video that you have wondered, do I do respite? Do I even consider putting my child in respite? Talk to a social worker. Talk to someone who has done foster care. Leave me a message and I'll try to respond to you in the comments about the benefits of, of respite care and how it can change your perspective on not only you and your situation, but also your perception about the child or maybe a case that you're involved in with that particular child. And these are my final thoughts. The answer to should you use respite is absolutely 100% yes. There have been times where I was offered a few weeks of respite. I said no. I thought I could handle this. It's okay. And that child ended up um, being sent to a different home. It was such a hard and excruciating moment. And as I look back, I wish that I wasn't so prideful. I wish this was early on in our foster journey. And I just thought that I could do it all. And so from that experience, I've learned the benefit of leaning on other people that a lot of hands make light work and it makes things easier when we have other people in our corner and when we access and utilize the resources that are all around us. Thank you so much for watching this video about respite. Remember again to subscribe, go out, live bold, be brave, and we will see you next time.